Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. Today I wanted to talk to you all about one of my favorite plants. Actually, I would say it is my favorite winter blooming plant and that is a camellia. I love camellia succinquas. I love camellia japonicas. I love them all and I love them all for a few different reasons, a couple different reasons. One of them is that they bloom at a time of year when nothing else is blooming. Even the daffodils haven't even started blooming yet when these babies are blooming. So camellia succinquas will bloom before Christmas. Christmas time and Camellia japonicas will bloom after Christmas time. And this is a time when everything is kind of dead and brown and the sky's gray. And I just want color and Camellias give that to me. Camellias with their multi-petal blooms, they're so, so beautiful. They give me color a time when I really, really want it. The other reason why I love Camellias is they're pretty easy. They're pretty easy to care for once you get them established. Yes, they like a little bit more acidic soil, but if you just fertilize them with a, you know, a Camellia gardenia rhododendron fertilizer, they're going to be so happy. So they're so easy. You don't have to worry about them. Third reason why I like them is that they are evergreen. They keep their leaves all season long and when they're not blooming they have these beautiful glossy green leaves that's a gorgeous backdrop and it just brings that dark deep green to your garden that I just love. Okay last reason why I love camellias is kind of it's kind of a personal reason it's close to my heart. Uh, when I was growing up, we lived in a home in Santa Rosa, California, and in the front of that home, there was a massive, and I'm talking massive hedge of Camellia japonicas. They were this beautiful corally color and they literally covered the house. So when we would take pictures, like first day of school pictures or dance pictures, like homecoming pictures, we would always do it with the backdrop either of the glossy green leaves or of the camellias in bloom. And it was just so beautiful. And it's bittersweet for me because unfortunately that house did burn in one of the California wildfires. So I don't even have access to those camellias now. Otherwise I would be taking cutting after cutting to bring them to my new property. Um, but I don't have access to those. So both my mom and I are kind of on this journey to find the camellia that matches the most, the closest to those camellias that we grew up with because we weren't real strong gardeners at that time. And so, you know, I didn't even pay attention to what variety they were. So anyway, I love, love camellias. And when I was talking to my friend, Eileen Carroll, who is one of the managers at the, Va the Van Winden Garden Center in Napa, California, she is, she's amazing. She is the most interesting and the most intelligent gardener I have ever met. And when you just, when you talk to her, you learn like 10 things. So when I was talking to her about my love of camellias, she asked me if I was familiar with the story of Nuccio's camellias. And you all have probably heard of Nuccio's camellias before. There's there's a couple on the market that are pretty popular, like Nuccio's pearl, um, Nuccio, I think there's a Nuccio's pink that's pretty popular. But anyway, there is a backstory to Nuccio's camellias. And when she told me about it, I, I just, I had, I said, can I film this? I need to film this and I need to share this information with all of you because it is so incredibly interesting. And there's a reason that you all need to hear about it now. Uh, and you'll, you'll learn it in just a sec. So <laughs> let's take a drive to Napa, California and talk with Eileen about camellias and specifically Nuccio's camellias. All right, everyone, I made my way over to Napa, California to Van Winden's Nursery. I love this place and I love you. This is Eileen Carroll. She's one of the managers at Van Winden's Nursery and she is the one who told me about the story about Nuccio's Camellias. So can you kind of give us a, like a little background about Nuccio's? Sure, sure. Okay, so last time you were here, I mentioned that Nuccio was on his way with his camellias and mm -hmm. you were not familiar, which is fine, but let me tell you about them. So, okay. the Nuccio family has been making camellias for like generations. They're another family-owned business, kind of like Van Winden's is. Mm -hmm. And when you have those family-owned businesses, you get like quality totally. and just 
great stuff happens. Good stuff, yeah. So um, Jim Nuccio is a really, really nice guy. He came up with his van and dropped off all these wonderful camellias. And this is like, these are like the unusual, exciting, fun things. This, this is stuff that he breeds himself, right? A lot of it is stuff that he breeds himself. Every once in a while, we get one that has just like a handwritten tag on it. Oh and there are goodness. no pictures on the internet yet. That's incredible. Because the way you get a new camellia is you grow them out from seed mm -hmm. and then you wait maybe five years okay. or in the case of Debbie Taunt, which is like a gorgeous pink L fluffy one. I had that, that one. That was like yeah. a 20 year project. Was it Where they're really? waiting, waiting, waiting. We think it's going to be cool. And now debutante is like you it's, know, one of the best. It's one of the best camellias. If you, I'll put a picture up right now. It is the most beautiful camellia. Did Nuccio do that one? He did not do okay. debutante. Okay. So he is in Pasadena. Is that right? He's that right? down south. Yeah. Okay. Um, like I think 80 acre property just doing camellias. Him and his, uh, whole family pretty much <laughs> that's incredible so and now eileen was telling me that we're kind of in a time crunch now with nuccio's camellias is that right yeah so word on the street jim said that um they're going to be going out of business in the next two to three years oh. so if you like camellias i highly recommend you find nuccio camellias and get them this year or next get your hands on some of the nuccio's ones now he is selling some of his varieties to monrovia right yeah so monrovia does like nuccio's gem i believe nuccio's pearl um, those are fantastic fantastic really fabulous varieties right um, so you can get some of his varieties other places but if you want like something cool and unusual like yes. my favorite well, I don't know. I'll tell you later. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm buying camellias today, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's just important. I know we're in fall and we're starting to think that the gardening season is wrapping up, but camellias, you know, I was it they're just so fantastic because they bloom when nothing else is blooming in the winter in the early 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 spring and a great time to plant them is right now in fall yeah the best time to source them at garden centers is the fall we bring them in right as they're all budded up mm -hmm. and this is a great time to plant in the fall i think you've talked about in lots of your videos how fall is the best time to plant Perfect. for so yeah. many reasons yeah yeah and so we're you know we're gonna show you all a whole bunch of camellias right now and they don't you know they have buds some of them don't even have buds yet so you come to the garden center and it's almost like what am i looking at but if you do a little bit of research and you understand it and you talk to the staff at an independent garden center you can get kind of the dl you can get the information about what's to come in the winter and it's just, it is so worth it you guys i promise so do you want to show us some of the varieties that Nuccio came sure. with? Okay, so um, one gallon camellias, a little bit cheaper, a great way to get started. All of these are Nuccio creations. So we've got Nuccio's Pearl, Nuccio's Jewel, Nuccio's Gem, Nuccio's Cameo, Nuccio's Bella Rosa, and Julius Nuccio. Wow, that's <laughs> incredible. And this is what I'm talking about with like the handwritten tags. So he did that. He wrote that. That's his handwriting. That's so cute. <laughs> that is so amazing. Yeah. So what's special about the Nuccio, the special Nuccio line? So you can just trust that Nuccio camellias are like top notch. Like truly, this is a boutique thing. Yeah. I don't know if that's quite the right word, but like they're just, they're the top of the line. Creme de la creme. Yes. Yeah. So these are, you know, he has how many acres would you say? Seven? Something like 80 acres. It's 80 acres yeah. of camellias. Yeah. So he basically has picked the best of the best out of all mm -hmm. of those. He picks the best. And then he's pick, he's put the Nuccio line name on it, which is just so cool. It's just so <laughs> fun. So this is, I mean, the fact that he's retiring, he is going to sell his land. Is that right? It so sounds like it. So it's like, if you have the opportunity to get your hands on these, get your hands on these, you know? I mean, it is worth it now at this time. So what is your favorite one out of all these? Ooh, maybe Nuccia's gem. It's got all that symmetry, you know? Yeah. That's pretty, pretty satisfying to look at. Yeah. Um, I love a Japonica, a Camellia Japonica, because they tend to bloom after Christmas time, okay. and that's when things are just kind of dreary in the garden. It's right. really nice to have like a big show of color, and the right. Japonicas will give you that. Right. The Sasenkwas, on the other hand, they're going to bloom before Christmas. Okay. So um, if you really want to extend your season, plant a Sasenkwa and a Japonica. Okay. All right. So just as a reminder to everybody, the two varieties are... Camellia Sasenkwa before mm -hmm. Christmas and Camellia Japonica after Christmas. Okay. And there are other species, but um, far and away Camellia 
So Sanqua and Japonica are the two most popular. The ones that you think of that when you see a camellia, that's, that's the ones that we're thinking of. Great. So what's your other kind of favorite ones that you want to show us probably my favorite one is um elegans champagne mm -hmm. so that one's over here okay oh i thought you were going somewhere check this out i'll just put it right here in the middle this is elegans champagne all right you can kind of see on the leaf maybe it has like a really ragged edge oh yeah so it's kind of got a little bit of drama just from the leaf how interesting the flowers on this are like that giant white but it's almost kind of a silver color oh my goodness and this has um giant flowers on these long branches eventually right uh -huh. so this is a fun thing to do with um, like a spalier or oh. maybe like plant in a pot with an obelisk uh, and kind of train it up you are speaking my language the right now the drama that this thing can bring it's so good oh how beautiful this one is gorgeous now what about a sasanqua show us a, a sasanqua okay okay so this is a camellia sasanqua it's a variety called yule tide okay and shockingly it blooms right around christmas right around christmas time and let me guess it's red it's red <laughs> it's perfect for santa yes so um this is a variety that has a lot of the stamen showing like all that pollen in the middle is showing and because of that Things like hummingbirds and other pollinators yes. love plants like this in the middle of winter. Because there's not much else going on. Not much on. else going on. So that's fantastic. And these I've seen full grown actually in a pot. I've seen and they're beautiful. And it just like your eye is drawn to it in the middle of winter when everything else is looking gray. Mm -hmm. And then I've seen one of these Yule tides and it's just so beautiful. So Eileen, can you talk a little bit about where we should plant camellias in our garden? Sure. So in general, camellias like shade. Okay. Some people out on the coast can get away with more sun for them, but here in Napa specifically, they love morning sun and then shade from like about noon on. Okay, all right. Um, another tip would be that they like to not have a lot of water on their leaves and their flower buds. Okay. Too much water on their flower buds can actually cause blossom blight, okay. which is really sad where before the flower even opens up, it starts to kind of get mushy okay. um, with a fungus. So no over overhead watering. Yeah, no overhead watering. Okay. I mean, these things though, they're drought tolerant, mm. which is fantastic. Right. Um, once they're established, I should say. Right, right. Um, they're evergreen. Even just the leaves are so handsome because they're shiny and kind of waxy and just so pretty. so pretty. So a lot of people like the idea of a camellia, but they think of the flowers as being so messy, which is true. If you want like a big show, there's going to have to be some drawback. Right. But a trick for that is underneath your camellia, make sure you use lots of mulch. Camellias loves mulch but also use some shade grasses, like maybe some acorus grass or some Japanese forest grass oh, or pretty. liriope or ophiopogon. Oh. Um, that way, when you rake out the flower petals, you can just rake through the grass. It's easy. If you yeah. plant other shade loving plants like azaleas underneath, it might be beautiful, but you're gonna have to go in and pick and them it's out. It's just more work. So yeah. if you're you know, a gardener who likes to be out there, rock on. But if you want a little bit easier project, do some grass. So tell me, how would you fertilize your camellias? So if you want to fertilize your camellias, you definitely want to use an acid fertilizer. Okay. Um, unless you live like up north where the soil is already acidic. Right. Here in Napa, we need to do a little acidification. So if you want an organic option, use EB stone, uh, azalea, camellia, and gardenia food. We love organic fertilizers around here because organic fertilizers with time loosen up clay soils, oh, whereas synthetic fertilizers over time compact clay soils. I did not know that. Those Good synthetic know. fertilizers are like your old standby they work fast mm -hmm. and there is a use for them for sure mm -hmm. but the organic over time is a great investment in your soil it will fix your soil mm -hmm. actually all right and then when when in the year would you fertilize would you say so camellias take a long time to set their flower buds so if you want to do any pruning on a camellia typically do it as soon as the blooms fade in the middle of winter okay and that's when you fertilize also okay so prune. maybe like a little it depends on your your zone but like maybe when the weather's a little bit warm when things are really cold plants are not usually sucking up anything okay um and then this time of year, if you want to do something nice for your camellias, give them a little bit of 0 10, 10 oh. which can be organic or it can be a synthetic. Okay. And that's going to be great for, um, they call it roots and shoots. Roots and shoots. It's a little bit of a misnomer because it's usually called bloom food. Okay. And while it does produce flowers, it's most useful in the fall to create a happy plant over winter. So if I see that fertilizer called bloom food, I think E.B. Stone has one, right? Mm -hmm. So that is a good one to put on in the fall to help 
help with winter blooming yeah eventually. it just kind of fortifies the whole plant because the, the zero place is that nitrogen mm -hmm. we don't really need more green growth going right. into the winter time right we're set um, but we do want overall strength in the whole plant absolutely and then what about as i'm planting a camellia what would would you use a starter fertilizer um depends on the soil you're starting with so okay. if you're in napa we recommend a bag of acid mix okay um because we want to break up the clay for sure and we want to acidify the soil and some sort of acid fertilizer would be fantastic okay awesome that's fantastic so van windens has what like 40 something types of nuccio camellias right of now nuccios we have i think 44 types that's crazy and then we have even more <laughs> yeah, more than just nuccios of course <laughs> so you all don't ship unfortunately you don't ship not <laughs> so, yet anyways <laughs> not yet but if you live within driving distance people can call and they can reserve one of yeah, these yeah definitely if you see something that you love um give us a call we can put something on hold we're open seven days a week okay um so yeah, come on down. And, and if you put out. it on hold, Eileen will pick out the best one I for will. you. <laughs> I will pick out the very best. All right. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put kind of a slideshow of all the different Nuccio camellias because they are so beautiful. And there's some really, really interesting ones that I've never seen before. So just to kind of familiar, familiarize us, all of us, about what varieties there are, I'm going to put them on the screen right now. Um, and then just remember, some of these might be gone in the next two years. So yeah, a lot of these be only got five plants <gasps> so oh. if you wanted like a really dramatic display of camellias yeah. you're gonna need more than one yeah so act fast get here get here well thank you so much Eileen you are so knowledgeable and so wonderful and I appreciate your time yeah. okay now it's time for me to go camellia shopping ah. <laughs> isn't she the best she is so interesting she is so intelligent and I love the story about Nuccio's camellias and I don't want to be like alarmist and go out and get them now but he's retiring and we're not gonna have these beautiful camellias. We're gonna have some of them. He did sell some of them to uh, places like Monrovia, but a lot of them are just gonna be gone and you're not gonna be able to get your hands on them. So of course, I went a little overboard and I bought a couple camellias for my garden. Let me show you the ones that I got. So I ended up purchasing five. Yes, I know, five, <laughs> but it was just, it, they were just so beautiful and I love camellias and it's just such a wonderful story about uh, Nuccio's camellias. So I wanted to get my hands on some. And plus they have handwritten tags. I mean, I am saving that for sure. So let me go over the ones that I got. I tried to go like half and half so that I could get a show before Christmas and after Christmas. So the first one I have is this one. This is Eileen's favorite one, Elegon's Champagne. This is a Japonica. And this one is pretty, pretty big, 10 to 12 feet tall, three to 10 feet wide. So I gotta give it lots and lots of room, but it has these big, beautiful, large white flowers with creamy centers, just like Eileen was saying, and I just couldn't pass it up. Right behind here, this is another Japonica. This is Pearl Maxwell. And as soon as I saw this picture, I knew I needed to have it because it just looks so pretty. It's these soft pink flowers. This one gets about six to eight feet tall and wide. And again, this is another Japonica. Um, this one over here, this is one of the Sasenquas that I got. This is Showa no Sakai. I think I'm saying that right. I have no idea, but it's pretty cool. This one already has buds on it. So again, the Sasenquas are ones that are going to bloom before Christmas and the Japonicas are ones that are going to bloom after Christmas. So this one has soft pink semi-double uh, ruffled flowers with bright gold stamen. And this is one, just like Eileen said, that the hummingbirds are going to love in the dead of winter. This one gets about five feet tall and about six feet wide, so a little bit more of a hedge. Then the next two I got, I think are the most interesting ones that I picked out, and they are actually Camellia hybrids. So not quite a Sasanqua, not quite a Japonica. The first one I have is this one right here. This one is called Spring Festival. And you can see this one is already starting to get little growth points, little buds on it. But I wanted this one because the blooms, they're smaller than regular blooms than, you know, the other camellias, but there's more of them. They're so 
many blooms and uh, Eileen said that when this one blooms, it kind of looks like a cherry blossom tree, which is just the coolest thing. Um, so this one is actually a pretty cold hardy one. Most uh, camellias are hardy somewhere between zone seven through 10 and spring festival is actually hardy down to six B. So it's one of the most cold tolerant ones. Um, this one gets about five to nine feet tall and five feet wide. So still really, really big. <laughs> I'm as I'm looking at these heights and widths, I'm thinking, Hmm, where am I going to put all of these? Cause they have to have, they have to be protected. They can't be full sun. So I'll find a place. The last one that I wanted to show you that I got, this is called, this is another hybrid and it's called high fragrance. I had no idea that camellias could be fragrant. And so this is a really, really special one that is so, it, apparently it smells so good. Apparently it smells just like roses. Um, this one gets five to eight feet tall and wide, soft pink, large flowers, about four inches that are semi-double. And then again, smells like a rose. So how exciting. So I think I wanna put this one pretty close to the front door so that you can kind of walk by it. So I'm planning to put some, probably two right here. Do you see how this orange tree, which is evergreen, it's going to protect some right there. And then I think I might put another one behind this orange tree. So that's three. And then I do want to put at least one in my secret shade garden over here. I don't want to do too much because I don't want to take it up, take up the secret shade garden with camellias, but I should at least put one, maybe two. So I'm thinking of putting one kind of, kind of over by where that bistro set is. Um, and then, I don't know. I got to think where I'm going to put the last one. I'm going to figure it out right now. All right, I think I've decided where I'm gonna put all of them. The first one is right here. This is the Spring Festival Hybrid. I'm putting it kind of tucked back in here between the fence and the orange tree. I think it'll be really, really pretty because it'll just kind of hide back here until um, it starts uh, blooming in the middle of December, which will be really nice to have some of that color. I, I you know, I wish I could put it more front and center, but I just can't because I just, I just don't have that many, that many shade trees. Once my willow tree gets a little bit bigger, it would be really pretty to put some underneath the willow tree. Um, but this, this is what I've got for now. Then coming over here, I did want to put one on this north border bed. Um, I am going to be putting, you know, like, uh, the Michael Glassman suggestion that he did, that he said about all the screening trees. I want to put podocarpus, but I think I want to mix it up a little bit with some other things just to make it a little bit interesting. Again, this pluot is, um, going away there. I don't know why that garbage is there. <laughs> Just ignore that. Um, but I did put the Elegance Champagne here. This one gets about 10 to 12 feet tall. And I think having this tree right here will kind of protect it. So I hope that that grows really big. And then we can kind of just... Um, intersperse the podocarpus and maybe a couple other trees in between it. So I think that's a good spot for that one. You know what? I changed my mind. I am putting the Camellia Sasanqua, um Showa, Showa no Sakai right here. And this one is a little bit shorter. It's only about five feet tall. And then I think I want to put the Champagne Elegans that gets 10 feet tall right here. And this one that I had right here before, this is the high fragrance one. That gets about five to eight feet tall. So I think I'm going to move that one over there where I just showed you. And I'm going to move the Champagne Elegans over here. And again, they're not going to bloom at the same time, but they're going to be these evergreen kind of shrubs. So I think it'll be really pretty to have the small one and then the bigger one behind it. Then finally, the last one is over here. This one is the Pearl Maxwell Blush, and it's just gonna go kind of right here. Again, I'm gonna have the live wall behind it right there, so it's gonna keep it nice and shaded. This one might not bloom as much as the other because it should be pretty close to full shade. Um, it might get like a little bit of dappled something, but I think that it's gonna like it. I think it's gonna be happy. I think it actually might be happier than the other ones because it's gonna get the most shade. So we'll just have to see. I can always move it around. Camellia's don't like being transplanted, but if I have to, I will move it. This is where I want to put them all. I had planned to put them all together and have like a camellia corner, but once I started looking at how big they actually get, I, I decided to 
it was probably good to kind of spread them out a little bit. And then finally for planting, I am following Eileen's suggestions to the T. I am going to amend each hole with a little acidic potting soil. And then also some of the EB Stone, Azalea, Camellia, and Gardenia food, just to kind of acidify it a little bit. I, ha I haven't gotten my soil tested yet. I am planning to get it tested by my old neighbor, the Daniel, the agronomist. Um, but I have looked it up on the soil web app and it does show that I do have kind of acidic soil, which is pretty exciting. It said it was between six and 6.5, but I think Camellia is like more, I don't know, like five to six or somewhere around that. So I think it would still benefit from me acidifying a little bit, but I think these, I think these Camellias are going to be happy. All right, let's get planting. So I've got them all planted. I wish I could show you blooms, but I'm gonna have to wait until December and January for that. But if you all are interested in camellias, if you all are camellia crazed like I am, make sure you look out for Nuccio's camellias. Since they're going to be going away soon, um, the really rare ones, the really, really interesting ones are not going to be available over the next couple years. So just keep a heads up. You, If you live near Napa, go ahead and call Van Windens. If not, call your local garden center and see if they can get their hands on some really interesting Nuccio's camellias. So I hope you enjoyed this. A big thank you to Eileen at Van Windens for teaching us everything and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.